Welcome to the presentation of OnTask, a solution for personalized feedback at scale as part of the Open API 2021. My name is Abelardo Pardo, and I'm currently a professor at the University of South Australia. I want to share with you a little bit what is behind uh, OnTask and its functionality. The main motivation behind the tool is to take advantage of the literature or the studies that already exist in the area showing that there is a very strong correlation between the use of feedback in uh, learning experience and the increase in either attainment or performance or the overall quality of the learning experience. Feedback is also a very intuitive concept that helps us connect with uh, instructors in general and try to get them to explore different ways of providing feedback and different ways of supporting students at the end of the day. So this is the main motivation behind the tool. Now, with a little bit of experience providing feedback, it is a fairly delicate process in the sense that it involves communicating with uh, learners, but it also involves having a good sense of the learning experience, the special situation of each of the learners. And that translates basically into a lot of challenges when trying to scale this type of process for a large number of students. And this is the idea behind OnTask, to try to provide a tool that supports instructors providing effective feedback or deploying feedback processes at scale for large student cohorts. The conceptual model behind on tasks is fairly simple. Instructors basically uh, manipulate a set of uh, workflows. A workflow for us, the object workflow, has three main components which translates in different functionality within the tool. The first one is the data upload merge. There has to be data in order for instructors to personalize those feedback messages. So data upload or data merge, and we'll get into that in a little bit of a second, uh, it's a, an intrinsic and very important component of the conceptual model. The second one, and this is also based on a lot of focus groups we run with our user uh, community of users, is data exploration. Sometimes instructors, they want to take a look, especially for large cohorts, they want to take a look at certain distributions of activities. The simplest example that comes to mind is the distribution of scores, for example, on an assessment that takes care in the middle of the learning experience. But it could be many other things, like uh, at which rate the students use the videos or how many students uh, are making use of the discussion forum. This type, type of data exploration, every instructor pretty much does something similar. The challenge comes when you have very large student cohorts and you have to rely on some sort of support to um, or some sort of tool that helps you do that type of data exploration. The third element of the, of the conceptual model, perhaps the most important, is once you have that, done this data exploration, then you craft or you create the personalized actions. That's when you use that uh, insight that you gain through data exploration and you start personalizing the content of some of these actions. In our experience, this conceptual model uh, is adopted differently depending on the institution. Some institutions, the data upload and merge process, they are completely separate from the tool. In other words, whenever an instructor uses on task, uh, the table or the data uh, that is supposed to be explored or used for personalized action has already been uploaded. And this can be done at the institutional level rather than on a one by one, each instructor differently. So let's take a quick tour of what on task offers. This is the first screen capture. So instructors basically manage a set of workflows, a collection of workflows. Um, and this first, uh, after logging the first screen, what it shows the user is a set of uh, workflows. An instructor may have an arbitrary large number of um, uh, workflows and therefore it could be um, a very large list and the platform allows you to select certain favorites. This is the main element of the workflow, the table. Um, table and actions, as you can see at the top menu. The table is basically data, but getting to these tables sometimes is a little bit convoluted, right? Let's delve a little bit into how the table gets here. So one of the options that uh, OnTask offers is some basic functionality for data upload and merge. Now, we can do that manually, and these are the options that you have currently available in the platform. You can upload CSV files, Excel, a Google Sheet, which is more or less a similar format in Excel, but you also can reach out to other platforms like S3 buckets or SQL connections. And at the bottom line, it's an Athena connection from Amazon. So these are basically data sources from which OnTask can manually pull data into the table. So just to give you a little bit of a glimpse of what is available, in the case of a CSV file, um, the first step obviously is select the file and um, 
perhaps even skip certain lines at the top or at the bottom if needed. But perhaps the most important one is that on task, after you give the data source, it performs some exploratory operations and allows you then to select certain columns for you to upload or merge. This is especially handy when you have to update data in your table because you already have a set of columns in there and the new data that you're trying to upload may be a subset that needs to be updated or maybe a restricted version. So after selecting these columns in step number four, perhaps one of the most delicate steps that the tool offers is the possibility of choosing how to merge the two data tables. So suppose you have an existing table with 100 students and uh, a lot of information about those 100 students. And suppose you want to update half of them, 50 students. So the new table that you are uploading or merging, this case would be merging because you already have an existing table. That table then, you have to select what do you do with those 50 results. In this case, if you select, for example, as you see there, all roles in both the existing and new table, what you would be doing is you end up with a table with only 50 students because you are forcing the new table and the old table to have exactly the same rows, exactly the same students. So this would be a very restrictive merge. You are updating certain rows, but you are getting rid of the existing ones. And, and this is a, an operation that may not make sense in certain scenarios, but it, it is the required one in certain others. So what we have seen over the years is there is quite a lot of uh, cases and quite a lot of variety of situations where uploading and merging data requires this type of selection. Another option, which is uh, also very common, is selecting only the rows with the key in the existing table. So this would be a different flavor of merge or a different flavor of update. It would preserve all 100 students, but it will only modify the data for the 50 students that are in the new table that you are uploading. So as you can see, um, something as simple as merging, when you unpack the details, it contains quite a lot of different cases and therefore uh, OnTask needs to offer that type of functionality. Now at this point, you may agree with me that this is a bit too convoluted and perhaps regular instructions wouldn't be able to do it. Um, we anticipated that when designing the architecture of OnTask and it offers an API, uh, an API for you to upload that data. So what that means is that you can deploy some automatic process that happens in some other agent or in some other corner of the, your um, IT infrastructure in the institution, and the data can be pre-populated or automatically merged. So this is basically the functionality that would allow an institution to carve out the data upload from the conceptual model and assume that instructors, as soon as they connect to uh, on task, they already see the table pre-populated. Let's now have a quick tour uh, about the data exploration. So suppose we have done already the upload and merge. This is the table that we're visualizing. The typical operations we've seen that users uh, want to do over this table is mainly sometimes create views. Creating views means selecting certain rows or columns. Um, the screen capture in there shows you how to select certain columns that contain the scores of a midterm exam. And even though your initial table may have an unusually large number of tables, the view allows you to create a subset and then visualizes that subset for you. So it removes the other um, elements of the table from this visualization. Another way of thinking about a view is, is basically trying to carve out a table subset and you stipulate uh, the conditions for this subset. The one that you're seeing in the screen is just a subset of the columns, but it could be a subset of the columns and a subset of the rows. Say, for example, any student that has certain specific um, attribute and certain columns. So in a way, a view could also be thought of as a square in the table. It's a subset of rows and a subset of columns. And on task allows users for each workflow to handle a collection of views and create or delete them as needed. The next thing that users tend to do in this table is this type of exploration where the tool provides them with a very quick statistical summary, depending on the data type, of course. If it is numeric, we can have box plots and histograms like we see here. If it is a categorical variable, let's say, for example, um, a student that is uh, coming from different backgrounds and we have three possible values, uh, in that case, only the histogram is shown. But what this offers is a very quick overall perception. And, and like I mentioned at the beginning, it's specifically tailored for large data sets. So, it allows instructors to get a very quick insight about the data that is stored about the students. Now let's get into the 
interesting part which are the personalized actions so we assumed you already uploaded your data there you already gained some insights what you would like to do next is create some personalized actions these actions are shown uh, to the user altogether and they have different type of them you can send a personalized email you can create a personalized page that given the right configuration in the tool can be shown as part of the LMS through a link um, we can also have a personalized rubric feedback and the tool also offers the possibility rather than sending personalized emails or messages to uh, learners to send what we call reports to other people within the organization so this would be a possibility say for example to detect certain conditions from students and um, send a list of those students to some other unit or some other department for further actions the tool also contains a very very basic survey engine and the reason for that engine to be there is because when we ask students for certain questions sometimes they are very basic surveys nothing sophisticated the results of those surveys are directly uh, uploaded into the table without any intervention of any other tool and this allows for very quick integration of simple surveys if you want to ask students for example what was the topic that uh, created the most difficulty in the previous week or things like that and of course those answers get put in the table and then you can use them for personalized feedback so let me give you an example of the first simple action suppose you just want to send an email to a subset of the students so you can create a text but you define a filter and that filter stipulates the condition to select those students in this case we want to um, send the email only to those students that have a, a number of days online that is less or equal to seven and then you write the email you allow some parts of the email to be personalized like the given name in this case very simple so this message as you see in the tab that is in the middle that says that selected only two learners of 15 this is the result of the filter. We apply the filter, only two learners are selected and those would be the recip recipients of uh, the message. OnTask allows you to take a preview and see those two messages, how they will be sent. And you see it's the same text um, and it personalizes the name, the name of the coordinator and the name of the course. If things are a little bit more complex, let's say for example, you would like to send an email to all the students, but the content of that email, you want to tweak it and you want to make it different, slightly different from one cohort or another. This is when you use the text conditions, the tab you see at the right. Those text conditions uh, allow you to capture certain values of your attributes that you would like to use them to enable or disable subsets or paragraphs or small sentences in your text so what you're seeing there is the collection of 15 conditions those conditions have been defined depending on the performance on certain topics for each topic there is a high performance low performance and mid performance times five that's why we have 15 conditions five topics and the idea is to provide for each one of those five topics different snippets of text to, to the students depending on their performance on those topics the email template is a little bit more complicated. You still have a lot of fields that you can customize, but what you end up doing is writing all those paragraphs surrounded by these conditions you just defined. So what it means is that certain paragraph, you write it there, but you, can, you want it only to be shown if the student has performed at the medium level in that topic. And this is what this template is allowing you, and the editor connects both the text and allows you to surround then certain paragraphs with the conditions and you should also see that on top of that you still can use the filter to select a subset of learners in this case we have a filter defined that will select 12 of the 14 learners so what that means is that you have a cohort of 14 students 12 of them are the ones you want to send the email and within those 12 you still have different versions of the email depending on their performance in five of the topics the example of course has a small number of students 14 but this is basically uh, an approach that would scale for any arbitrary number of students. If we use the preview, uh, this is what uh, the tool will show us. It will render that email for a specific student. You can see the condition values at the bottom and the resulting text when we select the right paragraph. So as you can see, this message is much shorter than the template because a significant portion of it has been removed and only the relevant paragraphs will be reaching that student, Phoebe. This is the overall picture of what we are trying to achieve. Um, the student matrix or the table is at the center. We have the students that are uh, represented by rows in that table, and the columns is what we call attributes or features. 
the type of features or type of attributes um, depends on your institution, depends on your learning experience, and ultimately depends on the data that your institution is capturing. Similar things can be said from the data input. If you have a rich data available to you, then you'll have the possibility of uh, personalizing quite a substantial number of features in your uh, educational experience. However, if you only have very broad data, then you will be somewhat restricted. So on task from that point of view relies on the detail of that data that is populating the table for you then to use it to create these uh, personalized actions. I'm going to leave it here. I hope I captivated your attention. Um, remember that this is a tool that has been used in a variety of contexts. Um, some of them were focusing on addressing retention and student satisfaction. Some others more, more focus on communication and prov provision of feedback. Um, it can be used and it has been used in a lot of institutions for the provision of more of, of a coaching support, but very contextualized to specific courses and it's now being used in several institutions. If you have any more information, just make sure to take a look at our website, ontasklearning.org, and from there you can get um, a lot of details about the available tool, but also a lot of information about research studies and publications that derive from this uh, experience. That's it, thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, just make sure you contact us and we'll be happy to provide you any additional information.